meet an ambitious young geneticist called Zhang, who's basically like the new Henry Wu. And we, we learn that he's being mentored by Henry Wu. And Cyantech and InGen are, in fact, working together on this. Um, we don't know this up until this point. And in the lab, we see the rusted remains of the cryocan in a glass tray with the, with the InGen logo on a sticker on the glass box. So the young geneticist has built a genetic code based on the refined regenerative properties of the carnivores, and this creates the optimum dinosaur livestock for making the drug. Um, a side effect is that the dinosaurs that, that, that are made by it are hostile and vicious. Um, but it, when he talks to Wu about it, they, dis, they um, agree on the fact that they're only grown to be destroyed. And Wu agrees that this is actually fit for purpose. Uh, you know, it, it does what it needs to do. And he's just glad that his work from the 1990s is still of use. So for him, it's a pride thing. Yeah, very nice, very nice touch. And it's got to the point maybe where he's weary about it. And he just, he, it's not so much that he's kind of, you know, making a big endeavor now. He's just kind of like, I'm just glad it's still being used by someone somewhere. You know, I'm still, I'm just glad to be of use. Um, yeah, well, the way I always sort of felt about Wu is that it was never really about the dinosaurs. It was about pushing the limits of technology. Yeah. Which is, so he's just happy that it's still going, as you say. So I think that yeah. opens the door for him to realistically have that sort of callous attitude towards the animals that you described. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. And actually, he's, I kind of feel like he wouldn't be that invigorated about the dinosaurs by this point. I feel like after the tragedy of Jurassic Park, he might be a bit deflated, but he would still maybe want his work to carry on in some way. And and maybe he feels like life extension is, is a noble enough cause for him to not worry about the implications too much. And also he would have been well aware of the fact that they create the livestock, they destroy it, because that's what he did at Jurassic Park. It's not so much of an obviously evil thing. It's more of a sort of dismissive nature that's kind of been bred into him through Jurassic Park, I suppose. Um, so this drug livestock um, doesn't have a name yet, so it's kind of like the Voldemort dinosaur. Um, <laughs> we, we see a glimpse of them through bars of a raptor-like paddock, and they're, they're kind of raptor-sized and fast and ferocious. They have a venomous bite, now this is important, that paralyzes the prey instantly, so you're conscious when you're being eaten. Oh, God. So it's it's essentially what Alan Grant describes in the original Jurassic Park to that boy. Yeah, when you're alive when start they start to eat. eat. It's that, <laughs> yeah. but it like made real. On, quite literally on steroids. Yeah, exactly. And that's the only thing they have. They're like they're fast, vicious. They're like raptors, but that's the main thing: is that when they bite you, they bite you once and they go away. They come back. They're kind of like a snake. They they paralyze you. Uh, that's sort. Of, it's actually sort of like the. The Dilophosaurs in the original novel. I think there oh, was yeah, a part yeah, yeah, that's true. they were described as being observed biting and then retreating while the animal died and then going in for in for the kill. Or, that's a good point. Yeah, no, I think you yeah, that's that's a really good point. Actually I love the Dilophosaurs, so I'm kind of yeah. glad that's in there. Um so the new geneticist Zhang is is he's surprised that the female Rex has actually survived this long. And what they speculate is that the the life prolonging attributes found in its bones are the reason for the T Rex surviving so long. Yeah. Um, which explains why she's still around. Um, but the research shows that the smaller dinosaurs, the smaller carnivores, have a higher concentration of the drug compound needed. So Rex is actually scheduled to be put down and killed. Oh. Oh, unple- unpleasant twist. <laughs> yeah, so she's she's at that paddock. Um, so we're kind of really getting old school Jurassic Park feels. And um, at her termination, she's sort of held in restraint similar to the ones we saw in, in The Lost World. Yeah. And this is where I think it could veer into where the story could change. These were just ideas I had, but they don't necessarily... I think up until now, I'm fairly pleased with the story, but this is where the story could go in lots of different directions. But this is just one direction. Um so the, the vet who's in attendance is young and, and visibly nervous. Um, I haven't decided who that would actually be. Um, but as the final injection is ad- administered, the eye of the old Rex flutters and watches a bird fly overhead in sort of slow motion. We sort of hold on that moment for a few beats. It's kind of like it's evolutionary descendants sort of flying overhead in a sort of angel moment. <laughs> um, and, then, and then just as we're convinced the Rex has died, the restraints suddenly 
Shudder to Life. Oh, thank God. I thought you were actually going to kill it. There, <laughs> I was. Well, that's the thing. I think we should really hold on that moment as if she has died. And it should be like it the is end a, of the Rex. And it's going to sound corny to say it, but that is a, a beautiful concept of the seeing the bird in her eye and stuff. Yeah, I just thought it'd be really cool. You could have a really long poetic moment. I don't know if it would work in the context of the film. I'd have to see it. But I think if you, if it was done right, I kind of think, like, I don't know, the... I hate to reference this film because I didn't I didn't enjoy it so much. But the Last Jedi, if you've seen the Last Jedi, there's the bit where, spoiler alert, where have you seen it? Oh, I have. Yeah. Okay. Fear, fear so not. Laura Dern's character when she basically she does her final move. Yeah. There's that moment where it kind of holds on that, and I I really feel like it. it you should feel like time has just really slowed down for that moment when the T Rex is about to die, and you can kind of feel its heartbeat slowing down. You see its eye look up, and it's. Yeah, you kind of. Well, I think you know. You say it might be hard to execute, but you also have to to consider the sheer wit of nostalgia the audience would bring to that. So they would probably half your job is done for you. That would carry a tremendous amount of weight, however yeah. you executed upon it. I think, and also the only thing I fear about it is it'd be the first time you'd see the Rex again, and she'd be in restraints. I mean, you might have to show something of the Rex being in the paddock before that. I don't know. But no, this- no, I, I think if you if you reveal her in this sort of pitiful state that packs quite a bit more of a punch than just sort of seeing her doing her thing so just as um we're convinced the rex has died the restraint shot her to life and in a similar way to the lost world they might have administered too much or too little and uh, Loc- locomotive time yeah and the earth is kicked up in red clouds as it sh- as the restraint shudder and they shudder in kind of like rhythmical booms like the footsteps yeah and then finally she breaks free, and Wu, who's present, is actually snapped up in a single swoop of her head. Oh! And he, she washes him back with her tongue, and he's kind of like still alive as he's going down. And it's kind of re- <laughs> reminiscent of the goat in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, kind of being washed back down. Now, this is actually as far as I've got. This is, this is where I stop. <laughs> and it sounds really weird, because I could have carried on with the rest of the story and how Ellie comes into this. Yeah. But this is where I feel like this is a good point of departure because it's kind of like where the, the crisis begins. It's the catalyst for the crisis on the island. Yeah, and it's it also starts that crisis with an incredible twist because I don't think it would be an exaggeration to state that most people would be expecting those uh, funky sort of raptor dinosaurs to take out Woo. Yes, yes, exactly. You'd think that would be the first thing to break out. But in fact, what I'm doing is trying to echo the Jurassic Park, the fact that the T-Rex is the first one to properly break out of her paddock. Yeah. And I really and, love that sort of homage to the footsteps with the, the restraints. It's oh, very thanks. nice. Cool. Yeah, so that's where I've got up to. And um, in terms of the rest of the story, I kind of feel like the T-Rex should be just running around doing her own thing like she was in Jurassic Park, not necessarily being interested in anything or causing particular chaos, but that's the first crisis, and then other crises kind of piggyback off the back of that. Um, And then also I was thinking Alan Grant, because he's got the cell phone message from his daughter, should get to Isla Nublar at the end. Yeah. And, and, and essentially saves his daughter. I don't think he should die or anything. But I oh, think, good. <laughs> but I think you. He, should, he should be there at the end in a, in a kind of, you know, a nice echo of, of, of the original Jurassic Park, saving her in some way. Um, so take, taking her, turning her away from the island as he did Hammond or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's really sceptical about the island still, even though it's a national park and it's, it's ran by the government. He's still, and as soon as he gets that cell phone message, he's gone. But this is off camera. So we don't know that he's going to find her until later on. We could have some sort of clue. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, that's that's where I kind of saw it, 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 it going um, later in the story. But yeah, that's 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 it, essentially. That's what I was thinking for the opening of, of Jurassic Park 4. And, and the way I weighed it up is that it explains way more of, uh, of where we're at between Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic Park 4. It, it, yeah. it basically, it, it weighs up the, it, it, it deals with the, the pteranodons in Jurassic Park 3. Um, it deals with the dinosaurs on Jurassic Park and why the T-Rex is still alive. Um, yeah. It allows us to have that nostalgia of the north of the park where the the carnivores still exist in their, their old paddocks. And also it respects the incidents of the previous films in a way that you would think, yeah, okay, they would do that. You'd think, put the carnivores miles away from people because you, you don't want them to eat. It's, it's obvious. 
Um, yeah. And if it was government ran, they'd be really kind of cagey about everything. So they'd cagey, but you know, they'd they'd want to they'd want to protect people as much as possible if it's a national park. So they'd say, you know, just put the herbivores down there. That'd be fine. Um, yeah, and it really does. It fundamentally addresses the overarching criticism of Dressic, which is why do you keep build, building on these islands? Yes. It, sort of, it completely addresses that and gets it out of the way early on, which is nice. That's cool. I'm, gl- I'm glad you like it because it's, it's reassuring to hear someone. I, I, I haven't really pitched it to anyone else and I, I just thought it was worth um, getting out there. And I was kind of thinking about it over Christmas. And I was like, yeah, that could work and that, and, and that would be okay. Um and, it, and I, th- I don't see this as so much a trilogy, actually. I see this as just a fourth film on its own, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think if you I think if that's your concept, there is really no point in trying to sort of artificially expand it into a trilogy. If you have a really solid film that could be told in one sitting, yeah. go for it. Yeah. And the way I see those those uh, those raptors, the 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 kind of the, the livestock for the drug, you know, that's kind of borrowing from the you know the hybrid idea, but trying to do it in a way that's that's a bit more plausible rather than kind of breeding it for human entertainment it's 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 breeding it for for an actual scientific purpose it's livestock it's, and you, know. you do you do tackle it in a way that i really appreciate because with the hybrids like if there's hybrids in a movie in a Jurassic movie they're obviously going to get out and cause havoc and i really like the reason they cause havoc being that the genetic tampering sort of affected their temper Yes, I think that's the best way to go rather than just oh it's a big rampaging monster just because it's a big rampaging monster yeah like it was designed that way to be a big rampaging monster whereas this is kind of like yeah I see what you mean it's kind of like a side effect of it and I kind of see like I don't think the 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 new livestock dinosaur should kind of like face off with the T-Rex or you know I I feel like it should have its own scenes um, and maybe be something that's really wily and doesn't turn up very often and then maybe just turns up at the end and then they have the showdown with that one um and that goes towards making it a whole lot scarier because you're for the duration of the film you're going to be sitting there going where is this thing this yeah threat, exactly you know? i think it, it should echo what they did with the raptors which was actually they kept the raptors right to the end and um i felt that was really effective the less you see of it it feels like that's the way it's going with fallen kingdom and the um the supposed uh, indo raptors well, um, we can, we can hope. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what they're going to do, and that, I think that's a wise choice, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do here in this story. But yeah, that that that's it. That's my um that's my pitch for a Jurassic Park four uh, narrative, uh, like an alternative Jurassic Park four. I do, I really approve of it because I know some people might think, oh, of course you're going to say you like it because you're actually talking to you about it but the only thing i really wanted from jurassic park 4 and i know some people think you should just go and try and do something original but i always like the main element for me was open park that's all i want to see and then do something interesting with it and i think you did pull that off considerably yeah i think it's it's less of a uh grandiose opening and more like a a, a, a national park that's been there for a while yeah um, and the, this research has kind of been going on in the other parts of the island. I mean, I think the the I think the, the the south of the island could still be you know grand, and and still yeah. be be breathtaking. But I think more in a way that respects Hammond's vision post the Lost World. So yeah, kind of stepping aside as much as possible, um, and just you know the herbivores being the main thing that people see. Um, well, I, mean, I think that's that's the only way, even in future films that are actually going to be made, I think that's the way you restore the wonder to Jurassic, is to just let the dinosaurs speak for themselves. Absolutely, yeah. And I kind of think that you could even have the visitor's centre part, when you walk into the Grand Visitor's Centre, have the John Williams theme start there. Yeah. And, 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 and have walking through the halls of this almost like Church of Dinosaurs with the the herbivores on either side and these glass atriums just walking through unexpectedly i yeah, think it would be, a, it'd be a lovely a lovely place to put it and not to mention the fact that you're actually playing it over some dinosaurs as well yeah i know i always felt that that was lacking in that bit and i i, I sometimes wonder how much studio control you know affected trevorrow's vision because it's kind of like a no-brainer to put dinosaurs in that bit but i mean maybe he wanted to save them for the gyrospheres later on um, yeah, but I would make the argument that maybe uh, that opening vista 
should yeah. have had a really triumphant statement of Giacchino's theme because it's a really nice theme and then yeah. when you're actually in the gyrosphere valley, gyrosphere valley with the dinosaurs then you get William's theme and there's an incredible payoff because you've been wondering where it is for the whole film yeah that's a good idea yeah that's true yeah, so you kind of wait for it, and you have you have an inkling of it on the monorail. You have a little bit of it yeah. on the monorail, and then that's yeah. I think that that would work really well. Yeah, I always thought the monorail should have been you are a quite a distance away from the gate, and you sort of just see the silhouette of it approaching, and you like as a fan, you know what it is. Uh, you sort of get that hint of the music. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. That's yeah. an interesting way to look at it as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's the story. That's the plot. Um, that was just. You know, it was just me mulling over Christmas. But I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, comments from, from you guys underneath um, what you think of this alternative plot and um, what you think of this discussion. I think probably I'll, I'll break this up into, into a two-parter. So this will be the second part, the end of it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, it's been great having you on, John. I'm sorry it's been me. Well, thank uh, you monologuing at you and rabbiting oh, no. at you for the duration please i'm sorry i'm sorry i came across as so discombobulated but no this is no it's been great literally having you on. this is literally my first ever sort of collaboration no it's brilliant having you on and actually i think we should go forwards with more discussion about the jurassic park movies and um guys if you haven't checked out john's stuff check out the jhm files i'll put links down below to all of his stuff it's fantastic I, I love reading his articles and yeah his, his podcast content is great you've also got a very good podcast voice i have to say it's uh, really yeah oh god yeah it's a very good podcast voice it's very easy to listen to so i think um that well, bode, bodes well for the future of the jhm files but, well, i think um, i should just say just to clarify if you really just want drastic content from the jhm files because there's some other stuff there too yeah head to the jhm files.com forward slash drastic and you just get drastic ah that's great so there we go okay john right i think i'll, I'll wrap this up here um guys if you want to uh, rate comment and subscribe please do uh and i'll see you guys in the next video